This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Um, have we had Nehemia before? Well, that is a very interesting question. We had in Sefer Ezra an individual by the name of Hatir Shasa. Hatir Shasa was somebody who, literally, Hatir Shasa means the one who permitted. That is certainly one of the uh, names that Nehemia is given. Uh, now, why was he called Hatir Shasa? He was called Hatir Shasa because he mattered. What did he permit? He permitted the wine that was, uh, he permitted wine to drink if it was touched by a non Jew. Now, how could he permit such a thing? It was uh, Asr Sidra Bananta, to drink wine that's touched by a non Jew. The answer is, he didn't permit it for other people, he permitted it for himself. How did he permit it for himself? The answer is because he was Pikach Nefashis. Because he was the wine bearer. So, if that's the case, so why did he need a special heter to permit it? Of course it's permitted. What did you say he was? He was the wine bearer. He was uh, the... Right? Now, if you take a look back in Ezra, Park Bays, um, Pasuk Samach Gimel, okay? If you look back in Ezra, Perak Beis, Pasuk Samach Gimel, Vayoy Meha Tershasa Lohem, who is the Tershasa? Rashi says, this is Nechemia ben Chaklaya. Why is he called Tershasa? Because he mattered, the Chachamim mattered him to drink the Yayin Nesach of Akum. And why? Because of the Kuach Nefashas. So the question is, you don't need the Chachamim to permit that for you. You're allowed to violate any mitzvah in the Tarah of Kuach Nefashas. The answer is a very big yisait. And that is, once you're in the situation, it's mutter. But you're not allowed to put yourself in a situation where you're going to have to come rely on a heter. For example, you know, there are a lot of heterim, let's say for parnasa, there's certain things you could do when you're in the workplace. You can, you can't, whether you hold the heter, you don't. But who told you to get that job in the first place? Yeah, oh, I, now I'm in the job, I have a heter. It wasn't drafted? You should have uh, maybe looked for a different job. He so, no, no, he, he, he allowed himself to be, yeah. He, he volunteered. In fact, he actually came back to it. Because we're going to see, he went up in Teretz Yisrael in the times of Karish. But when Karish rescinded his decree, he sort of put himself back into the position. What right does he have to put himself back into the position? Be, be a Pashtayid. Even though he thought he might have influence. So, ah, that's what, even though he thought he might have he needed a Lamaisi, he needed a Heter cause to, to take the job again because he would have to rely on this Kula. Okay. Now, there's another name that Nehemi had, other than Hatir Shasa, and that is, the Gemara says, I believe in Sanhedrin, on Daf Lamed Ches Amad Beis, I think, the Gemara says that his name was Zerubavel. Right? You know? Not Kate's Bavel, but Zerubavel, right? So he had another name, Zerubavel. Why was he called Zerubavel? Nur Rabbi Cheskel. What? Yisrael. He was Nizrab Bavel. He was conceived in Babylon. That's why he was called Zerubbabel. He didn't. He wasn't born in Bavel. Not to the exclusion of being born. Uh, and he was conceived and born Nizrab Bavel. Now, by the way, this is the opinion of the Gemara Sanhedrin on Daflam Ches. Yeah, Daflam Ches. And the Malbim. The Malvim says that not only was he Zerubavel, but had he been worthy, he could have been Mashiach. But, it's very interesting, the Rambam disagrees. The Rambam says that Nehemiah was not Zerubavel. Now how the Rambam could argue on a Gemara, that's uh, difficult. But the Rambam writes, he brings down here in his Hakdam at the Parish HaMishnayis, and he says, that the uh, that uh, Nehemiah was not Zerubbabel. And if you look back in Sefer Ezra, Perak Beis, Pasuk Beis, take a look back in Ezra, Beis Beis, Asher Bo Im Zerubbabel. Who came with Zerubbabel? Yeshua, Nehemiah. Nehemiah came with Zerubbabel, so obviously they're not the same person. But you could say that Nehemiah was a different Nehemiah than this Nehemiah. So it's not necessarily a clear proof. Okay, now we're going to see that Nehemiah's main task is rebuilding the city of Yushalayim. Now, why does he need to rebuild the city of Yushalayim? You would think 
that the Beis HaMikdash is already built. In fact, the Beis HaMikdash was, we know Kairish was the first one to give permission for the Beis HaMikdash to be built. But then there were, the Tzayre Yehuda put a halt to it. And then in the second year of the reign of Daryavesh, the Persian, he gave permission for the, the Beis HaMikdash to be built. And in what year was it completed? In what year of Daryavish was it completed? So you look in Ezra, uh, Paragvav, Pasuk Tezvav, it says, The Shait Si Baisa Dina Ad Yom Tolasa Lirach Adar, Di Hishna Shais Lamachas Daryavish Maka. The Beis Amigdash was completed in the sixth year of Daryavish. And in what year did he give permission for it to be built? I believe in the second year. In year or two. Completed means that it became functional or the superstructure was completed? Both. It was completed and then it, they started the Avaida. Okay? So permission was granted in year two and it was complete in year six. So it's basically, it was complete in year six. And Nehemiah's main job is to fortify the walls of Yushalayim. Did Nehemiah come before the Beis HaMikdash was completed or after the Beis HaMikdash was completed? Now, when did Ezra come? Ezra came a year after the Beis HaMikdash was completed. How do we know that? Look in Sefer. We just saw in Ezra, Paragvav, Pasuk Tesvav. This is just giving you a little Chazara of Ezra. It's good for me, maybe um, it's good for you as well. But if you look in Parag Zion of Sefer Ezra, Pasuk Ches, it says, Vayova Yushalayim b'chodesh ha-chamishi, hi shnas ha Ezra came in the seventh year. Okay, so the permission was given in the second year of Dayavesh. It was completed in the sixth year. Ezra comes in the seventh year. So Ezra came after the seventh year. No, Ezra came after the seventh year was complete. Right. But now, Nehemiah. now, when did Nehemiah come? That's oh, the big question. Didn't you said the second. No, I didn't say the second. Year. I just said the Beis Hamikdash permission was granted in the second oh, okay. year, right? And but you know, Kshanila asks me. My presumption would have been that if Nehemiah is going to come fortify Yerushalayim from the attackers and and the destitution and the uh, privation and, uh, and hunger. You would presume he came before the Beis Hamikdash was built. Once the Beis Hamikdash was built, you would think that the Beis Hamikdash was built. Yushalayim was also in good standing, and that is the opinion. That is Tosis' presumption in the Safta Rosh Hashanah on Daf Gimel on the base. Tosis says, "Let's read the first pasuk first, and then we'll see the simple meaning, but probably not the way we're going to learn." Okay, so Divrei Nechemia ben Chachlaya. These are the words of Nechemia. It was the month of Kislev. Now note, it doesn't say the third month of the year. Normally in Tanakh, it tells you the number. But, right? In the Torah it says, but here it doesn't say, Nisam Iyar Sivan Tamas of Elo Tishrei Chesron Kislev. Right? It doesn't say the ninth month here. But instead it says Kislev. Why? Because we know that the mitzvah of counting Nisan as the first month was a specific mitzvah to remember Yitzhak Mitzrayim. But Yermia said that once God took us out of Bavel, you're not going to say anymore the God who took you out of Mitzrayim, but rather the God who took you out of Bavel. So now, once God took us out of Bavel, the, these Babylonian month names oh. supplanted right the, the numbers. Okay? It was in the month of Kislev. Shnas Esrim in the 20th year. Ba'ani Hayisi and I was. The Shushan Habira. 20th year of what? The courage? Oh! So Yosef is asking the million dollar question. The 20th year, but the 20th year of what? The Pasuk does not identify the t- what, what it is the 20th year of. So Tysus thinks to himself, the 20th year, it's either of. Daryavesh, the last king. So now Daryavesh gave permission in the second year. It was com- basically just completed in the sixth year. Ezra came in the seventh year. So does it mean the twentieth year of Daryavesh? 
13 years after Ezra came, first of all, why wouldn't have Ezra fortify the walls of Yushalayim? Second of all, why would the walls of Yushalayim need fortification? Here, you have a very, very prestigious return to the point where the Jews are restored the Avoida. You would think Yushalayim, you know, before you build uh, your temple, before you build a, a centerpiece for the city, you would think that it would be sufficiently fortified. So therefore, Tysus suggests that you have to say the 20th year here is not the 20th year of Daryavesh, but the 20th year from Kairish. If you make that Cheshven, Tysus says, that would come out, this is the third year of Daryavesh, three years before the Beis HaMikdash was completed. So now we understand why the Yushalayim needed fortification. The Beis HaMikdash wasn't even built yet. Taisa says... Why would we, we be counting 20 years from a king that's not in power? You count years when a king's in power. The king's not in power. Why are we counting 20 years? You're right. That's not necessarily what we would have said, but because of this question, we're forced to say it. If uh, Taisa in Masech the Rosh Hashanah said, Tashte dekra ma'ashma. The simple meaning of the Pasuk is the high of the Nehemia, the story of Nehemia, Bifne Atakshasta Hamelachaya, the Huda Yavesh Ben Esther Shedim the Habais Viamav. The simple meaning was would, of this Pasuk would be that who's the king now? The king you would think is Atakshasta, who's Daryavesh. In other words, this is the 20th year of Darius the Persian. But you can't say this, like it says in Ezra 615, You would think 14 years after the Beis Mitzvah was built, the Jews would be sitting pretty in Eretz Yisrael. And therefore, Tesis concludes, you're forced to say, it has to be the 20th year of Kairish. The Mitzvah's David came after Tysus. This is Tysus we're talking about. Tysus is saying, and you have to say... Tysus knew what Tysus says, but he obviously disagrees with him. Okay. Tysus feels that you cannot say that 14 years after Beis HaMikdash was built, Yushalayim needs to be uh, fortified. Okay. And th- this then took place in the third year of Daryavesh. However... Which Daryavesh was this? The second one. Oh, the, the, Daryavesh is Persian. Okay. But didn't Ezra come with a whole uh, this a is letter the son from of the king that basically said, you know, there's a lot of money that's backing you up, the carbonates and stuff like that, and everything. If there's any well, more money left over in the of Zion, and you can do whatever you that, want to do. According to this Tysus, Ezra was, is this is four years before Ezra came. It's the 20th year from Kairesh, which is the third year of Daryavish, and Ezra doesn't come till the seventh year of Daryavish. So Ezra hadn't even come yet. So in terms of the question, why didn't Ezra re- 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 uh, fortify the walls? The answer is, he's not even there yet, according to Tysus. Okay, we're now again, we're saying, according to this chant, Tysus, Ezra had, didn't make it there. Maybe he would have, maybe he, will, he should have, he, but he wasn't there. By the way, Rabbi, so this is not the way most Mepharshim learn. Was the, this Daryavish, the son of uh, This is uh, Daryavish, the son of Esther, correct. Okay. Which pshat? The one we didn't say yet? I'm not up to there yet. First we're saying Tysus. Tysus says this is the 20th year from Kairish. Ezra didn't make it. He's still learning from his Rebbe. Who's his Rebbe? Baruch, right? Baruch ben Neiria. Barashi on Sefer Ezra. And Tosis in the second shot says what? That this is the 20th year of who? 20th year of who? Daryavish. How do I know this? Says the Gemara in Masech the Rosh Hashanah and the Gimel Amad Beis the Gemara makes a Gzera Shava. If you look in Sefer Nechemia Parag Beis Pasuk Aleph Pasuk says 
Vayhi b'chodesh nisan shnas esrim le'artach shasta. The 20th year of Artach Shasta. So we're making Gzair Shava, Shnas Esrim, Shnas Esrim. Just like in Perak Bey, Shnas Esrim is of King Artach Shasta, so too in Perak Aleph, it's of King Artach Shasta. Now the only thing is, which King Artach Shasta? Artach Shasta is like the word Paroi for Persian kings. So many. Well, the simple Pshat is, that Perak Bey is, is referring to Daryavesh. Now why, let me ask you, why would the Pasuk explain the 20th year of Artach Shasta in Perak Beis and not explain the 20th year of Artach Shasta in Perak Aleph? The answer is because we already spoke this out. The Gemara in Sanhedrin says on Dav Tzadik Gimel, there are only 24 books in Tanakh. Ezra Nehemiah is one Sefer. So if Ezra Nehemiah is one Sefer, it's all one continuous story. That means it expects you to realize that this is not a new book. This is just continuation of Sefer Ezra. And Sefer Ezra in the, in the end was talking about which king? Daryavesh. So presumably, over here we're just picking off. We're picking up where we left off. Okay. Now in that case... We this, know one day and on another day, even if it's a continuation. He did. He did. Now the question is, if this is the 20th year of Daryavesh, the Persian... Then why were why was the city of Yushalayim in shambles if you shall, if the base of Mikdash was built? So says Tysus. You could explain this pasuk like the simple meaning. In the second year of Dayavish they began to build the house. And the binyan was completed in the sixth year. Vishareh, they did not build the walls and the gates except for the Beis Hamikdash, and the city was Beragadoyla and in great dispar- um, disparagement. Ah, says Tosis, they were only given permission to build the bias. They were never given permission to fortify the walls. They did not do that. And that is why you have this miserable state of Yerushalayim. Now, according to this Pshan and Taisus, and according to the way Rashi learns, that means you show that, that the Beis Hamikdash was built in year 6, and the walls were not fortified till 14 years later. When did Ezra come up? In year 7. That means Ezra is there 13 years and Yushalayim is in shambles. Why didn't Ezra fortify the walls of Yushalayim? How do you mean that Yushalayim is in shambles? The, is no, the, the walls are, are, are breached. The Goyim are plundering the city. The city was Why impoverished. Would, but, the, you, but the Goyim are plundering the city after the Beis HaMikdash? Correct, for 13 Why years. Why did they plunder the Beis HaMikdash? Beis HaMikdash has his strong walls, but the rest of the city is open. There, the, the base of Mikdash was guarded. You had Shoimrim. The rest of the city was, was in shambles. Why didn't Ezra take care of this? Why didn't Ezra deal with this issue? It's hard to understand that if uh, Daryavish gave uh, authority to rebuild, and Korish had given the original uh, uh, approval, mm-hmm. that they wouldn't provide whatever security would be necessary to they're going to build the base of English, put all that money and effort into rebuilding it that they're going to let the city be chaotic that they wouldn't provide whatever was necessary they didn't to they didn't some sort of uh, no because if you look you look carefully in in Ezra Perg Zion Pasuk Yud Beis if you look exactly what was Ezra commissioned to do it says, Artach Shasta, Melch Machaya, Liezra, Chana, Safar Dasa, Dila Kashmaya, Gemiru Chenes, Mini Sim Teim, Dichom Misnade Machusi. In other words, he specifically commissioned him to collect money and restore the Beis Hamikdash. So he was given that very specific order. And therefore, he was afraid he would be stepping out of boundary in terms of what his responsibilities were. He was never authorized. Again, remember the accusations. Do you remember the accusations that were hurled against uh, the base of Mikdash in times of Koresh? 
What did Kairish say? They, they claimed they were exceeding their authority in what they were supposed to be doing. Right? They complained they were also rebuilding Yerushalayim. That was really what was the red flag to Kairish. When he heard not only were they building the temple, but they were building Yerushalayim. If you remember, remember the uh, translators, they changed the, the message, right? right? Where was that? This, that was in Ezra. Right at the beginning, like part page of Gimel. Yediya lehevel lemalka in Perak Dalit di Yehudai de Slikum in Levasach Elana Asay Lerushlam Kiryasa Maradita. They're building Yerushalayim as a rebellious city. So that was how they translated. I mean, the fact that they would build homes what, and, and, and what they can see as a bank at a rebellious city? No, they, the, the, the fact that they were um, fortifying the walls of Yushalayim, that was something that was a red flag to Kairish. So possibly Ezra was afraid, again, to fortify the walls of the city because he was afraid maybe Daryavish would also put a halt. That, unauthorized building yeah, that was, uh, beyond the green line. I mean, that was exactly that was exactly why um, Kairish rescinded his decree. So that is perhaps why Ezra did not get involved in uh, fortifying the city. Okay, so here um, Nehemiah is in Shushan Habira. Vayovay Chanoni Echad Meyachai. Vayovay Chanoni Chanoni came. Echad Meyachai, one of my brothers. Who va'anoshim Yehuda? Him and a bunch of men from Yehuda. Va'ashalim and I asked them two questions. Number one, al ha'Yehudim ha'pleita asher nisharu min ha'shavi fa'al Yushalayim. I asked them about the Jewish refugees that remained from captivity, and I asked him about Yerushalayim. I asked him about the people, and I asked him about the city. Now, this is very important. And, um, Nehemiah was not asking about the Jews who returned now with the Olem. He was not asking about that. Because these Jews who were returning now were being protected by a special governor who was uh, administered to them. What they were asking about, what, what Nehemiah was asking about, were the Jews who remained in Eretz Yisrael, who never came, who never left. The Jews who survived the... Uh, the, the destruction of Yushalayim, they were unprotected. They were the ones who were being harmed. Those were the Jews that Nehemiah was asking about. So he had two questions about the people and about the city. And they said to me, that the, those who were left over from captivity there in the Medina, are in very big evil, disparagement, the walls of Yishalayim are breached, and the gates are consumed in fire. So how did Nehemiah react? And it was when I heard these words, Yashavti, I sat, and I cried, and I mourned for days, and I was fasting, and I was fasting, and I was fasting, and I said, Ona Hashem Alekei Hashemayim, please God, God of heaven, Hakel Hagadol Vahanoira, the God, the great and the awesome. Which word did he leave out? Hagibar. Hagibar, oh! He left out the word Hagibar. The same way Daniel left out the word Gibar, and it was the Anshe Knesset that restored it. Why did Daniel leave out the word Gibar? Because Daniel thought to himself, where is God's Gevura? 
at a time that the uh, when the when the goyim are subjugating us, and presumably that is why Nehemiah left out the word gibar also. Shoimer habris the chesed, the one who preserves the covenant and the kindness loayavav to those who love him l'shemer mitzvaysa. Tina oznacha kashavas. Please allow your ear to be attentive. Ve'inecha pesuchos and your eyes open. In other words, see our matzav, see our tears. L'shmayal tefilas abdecha. To hear the prayer of your servant, that I pray to you today, day and night, on behalf of the Jews who are your servants. And I say, I confess for the sins of the Bnei Yisrael, and I and my father's household have sinned. Because we know that if a person continues in the sins of their parents, they're not only punished for their own sins, they're punished for the sins of their parents as well. Chavoyl chaval nulach. Now what does that mean? Whoa. What does it mean chavoyl chaval nulach? We have been destructive to you. We have caused you devastation. Now, it doesn't mean chas v'shalom, we destroyed, we banished them, keviyach chas v'shalom. It means we have been destructive to you. What does that mean now? How could a person be cause destruction chas v'shalom? Says Rav Bag, Roy Shateda, you should know, Kilo Yazik Adam Lashem Yisrael V'chetai, Uva Ashchisai Darkai, Ach Rishoy Huloy Lavadai. When a person sins, he's messing himself up. He's causing devastation to himself. So what does it mean, Chaval Chaval Nulach? It means we have sinned toward you. Our <laughs> sins have been Ben Adam Lamakai. However, Bnei Yisrael are Hashem's children, and the father sees his children going off the derech. He's also uh, no. Yeah, but there's nothing. Uh, there's nothing. No harm, right? Shiches um, Lai. Lai. The the hashkas is to the person himself. When a person doesn't have air, it doesn't harm God. It harms the person himself. The Malbim, however, learns in a very creative way, in the same way as the Medrash, that Loisachavol Rechayim Barachav. Chavol could also mean security. Chavol Chaval Nulach means like this We have given you a security, God. What security did we give the Ibanishalayim? Right? We know the Beis Hamikdash is called Mishkan Ho'edos. It's like a Mashkain. That God takes the Beis Hamikdash or the Mishkan as a collateral to make sure we're going to do what we need to do. So it says the Malbim, Chavol Chaval Nulach, Hume Inyan Mashkon, the Chavol Hushem Veloy Makar. In other words, that the Beis Hamikdash is a collateral that Klal Yisrael are obligated to keep the Torah. And when we don't fulfill our, our Chayv, God takes back the Mashkon until they pay back. And only then does He give the Beis Hamikdash. So in other words, Chavol Chavalnu, what's the double Lashon of Chavol Chavalnu? That could be referring to the two Batei Mikdashin. Ah, the second Mesa Mikdash was standing, but this was sort of an ominous statement that not for long. In other words, that the Jews were understood that if they don't shape up, then the Beis Mikdash will be shipped out. So Chavol Chavalnu Lach, either we have caused destruction to you, or toward you, or we have given you security. We have not kept the mitzvahs and the chukim and the mishpatim that you command in Moshe, your servant. Remember the matter that you command in Moshe, saying, You told Moshe that if you act treacherously, I will scatter you among all the nations. But then God says, But if you return to me, and you keep my mitzvah, then if those who are scattered will be toward the end of the heavens, from there I will gather them. And I will bring them to the place that I have chosen. Says, Nechemia to God, Vehem Avodecha, they are your servants, Yamech and your people, Asher Padisa, that you redeem. Bechaychacha Hagado, 
with your great power of Yadcha Chazaka. Ana Hashem, please God, Tehina Oznacha Kasheves, allow your ear to be attentive, Al Tfilas Avdecha, to the prayer of your servant, Yal Tfilas Avadecha, and the prayer of your servants, Hachafid Sim Lira Shemecho, desire to fear you, the Hatzlichana, Liavdecha Yom, please grant success to your servant today, Usineo Larachamim, and please give him mercy. Now, Nehemiah is about, he's saying, God, please give mercy to me, Lefnei Ha'ish, Hazeb, before this man. Who's this man? Who's this man referring to? This man is referring to the king who he's about to bring his wine to. Ba'ani Ha'yisi Mash Gelamach. And I was giving drink to the king. I was the king's wine servant. Now here's the big question. What does he mean, I was the king's wine servant? Is this part of the tefillah? Or is this, does the tefillah end with the words, Ho'ish hazeh? And in the middle of the pasuk, Vani is a new thing, it's just factual information. You wouldn't think of the declaratory statement that I'm the king's wine servant would be part of any kind of So why, why would his tefillah end in the middle of the pasuk? According to the Siddhartha, it says that this is not a tefillah. So the Mitzvah's David says, "Ein zemi diberiat fila rak amar al atzmoi." He's uh, he's digressing to say about himself that he would bring wine to the king, and this is the introduction to Parag Beis. So that's very interesting that the end of Parag Aleph would interrupt his fila in the middle of the pasuk and put in introductory remarks to a different Parag. Now you say, okay, prakim, prakim are not a Jewish invention. Yeah, but there's a pay over here, which indicates at the end of the pasuk, even we believe it's a stop. So other mafarshim learn that this means like this: va'ani ha'yisi mashkelamelach. With this prayer, I was able. To, oh, the whole prayer is just an introduction to these last four words. How was I able to successfully be the wine bearer? With this prayer, Vani Yisi Mashkalamelach. In other words, we're not interrupting. Everything in this parak is a lead up to these final four words. He was words. Really saying a tefillah so he could be the Mashkalamelach? Yeah, because as Mashkalamelach, we'll see, he was successful in convincing the Melech to allow him to return to Yushalayim to be able to restore the walls. Vayibachaydesh Nisan, is in the month of Nisan, Shnas Esrim. The twentieth month, the twentieth year, Le Artachasta Hamelch of King Artachasta. Rashi learns Artachasta's Dayavish, the Persian. Tosis in his first chat in the Sefta Rosh Hashanah Gimel and Beis learns it's Karish, right? By Yayin Lefanov, I brought wine before him. Poesa Sayayin, I carry the wine. Poedna Lamelch, Belaya Yisi Ra Lefanov. And I was never bad before him. Now, what does that mean? I wasn't bad before him. Why would I never show him a bad-looking face? That's what the Mitzvah says. What does that mean? I wasn't bad for him. I was able to show a happy face. So the Malvin says the king is always suspicious of anybody who had a bad look on his face, lest, you know, he has bad plans up his sleeves. So Nechem is commenting, I always was careful, I was, I uh, carefully recognized this nature of the king, and I was always careful to Keep it appear, nice put, the happy put on a happy face. Okay, Rabbi Sai, with that, I bless you, you should keep a happy face till we meet next. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.